Thank you, Ryan. So honestly, before Ryan's idea, I never, never ever think about who can handle all my <laughs> online accounts and social media accounts and how to do it. So I think, you know, sometimes accident you can't expect. So what do you want to do with your all those online email and social media account. So you have to do it before you die, of course. So thank you, Ryan, for the sharing, and the idea is very innovative. Okay, so next we have uh, Steven. Oh, yeah, Steven. So go, go, Van. Yeah. Uh, my name is Steven, and can I make sure if the people at the back hear what I'm saying? Hey, Victor, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So. Before I start, uh, can I ask you guys a question? Have you guys ever rent a van like this in Hong Kong? Can you raise your hand? Okay, I see some people. So what's your experience on renting this kind of van? You make a lot of phone calls, a lot, a lot of phone calls. And a lot of the times, they don't call back. And you don't know if you, am I calling the right person? Am I calling the right company? They said, okay, if we get one, I will call you back. Bye. Just something like that. So. Today I'm going to tell you why I start my startup in Hong Kong about renting a van by a mobile application. And before my startup, my, this is my third startup project. And I failed two times. The previous one, I was selling lunch boxes on the street to restaurants. I'm going to tell you the story why I can change from selling lunch boxes to building a mobile application. So in 2008, I was a delivery guy in California. So a very, very traditional Chinese restaurant. I was driving my Honda uh, car, uh, delivering hundreds, hundreds of lunch boxes every single day after school, after work, uh, um, after my part-time job. So I was thinking, at that time, the lunch boxes is not like this. It's super and extremely boring. Who, who the hell would? would look at this tower and find it's interesting. Nobody. I have your attention, please. OK. I'm going to tell you about some lunch boss's story, which is apparently very boring, like the boss. But I'm going to change it to a very, very interesting story from a boss to a mobile application. So as I said, it's very, very boring. Who the hell would care about what's the printing on the box? So my friend and I who work in the same Chinese restaurant, which is called Little China, very, very Chinese. So uh, we said, hey, there's an Iron Man coming out in theater in two weeks. How about ask them to put an advertisement on the box? And whenever the family orders some delivery, they put the box in the middle of the table. Then it's the talking point. So the kid would ask, hey, dad, there's an Iron Man coming out. Can I go watch it? Then they already got some attention. So we got the idea to put advertisement on lunch boxes. Unfortunately, because my, my co-founders and myself, we did not have enough capital in California to start this business, and we were not allowed to start a company in California at that time. It cost a lot of money. So we think it may be a good idea when we come back to Hong Kong, we start doing this. And we, after some research, we found out in Hong Kong, every single day, it, we, we use 4 million lunch boxes. Can you believe it? 7 million people use 4 million lunch boxes. It's crazy. It's a crazy number. And we, we thought we found a big, big, big market. And we started to do something like this. So at the be beginning, we did something very lean startup model. So my co-founder and myself, we visit a lot of restaurants. We sign up at least 500 restaurants. We, we went in and asked, hey, can you use our lunch boxes? What's the special about your lunch boxes? It's nothing special, but it's free. In the past, we spent 30 cents, 50 cents to buy lunch boxes. And you do not charge your customer for, delivery, for, for to go. So now I'm telling you, your cost is going to be big. Why? Because we are, we are putting advertisement on each single process, trying to do the uh, advertising uh, free newspaper style, the model, 
on lunch boxes. And only three of us, we deliver over one million lunch boxes over a nine month period. For us, it's very, very exciting and very, very interesting. And then we hit a very, very big bottleneck. What's that bottleneck? You can see one big box, it contains 500 lunch boxes only. And the largest problem we had is the logistic problem. So every single morning, six in the morning, we call those calling center. Apparently, a lot of them, they are locked in working hours. And we need to call the day I had, uh, one week I had, to just reserve several vans and trucks to make sure our delivery is OK. Because we are a startup, we don't have enough capital to own our own logistic fleet. So we have to call. But after one week, two weeks, we find it's a pain in it, you know? So we start to think, what's the problem? And one day, we are about 9 in the morning, we have 20 this kind of process need to deliver to the restaurant in, uh, in Central at 10. We have one hour left. But no calling center is calling us back. Hey, we have a van. So what we did, we went on the street, locked on the vans, the, do uh, the windows, asking those, uh, those drivers, hey, we have a, this kind of bus that need to go, uh, deliver to Central. Can you help us? And then they said, yeah, why not? I have nothing to do. I just park my car here, paying my smartphone, reading, reading newspaper. I was thinking, what the hell those calling center is they are doing? We called like at least 10 calling centers. No one calls us back. But when we lock on the windows, they said, yeah, why not? But I need to charge you 10 more bucks. Oh, 10 more bucks, okay, just get the job done. Then we started to think, what's the problem? There must be some big, big problem in that industry so that the information cannot flow. So we start to think. No more phone calls. It's stupid. In this generation, making a lot of phone calls, hell no. When we communicate, we look at the screen, send SMS, WhatsApp. Why I need to communicate with, with the calling, calling center, the, the girls telling her I'm at, uh, in Central, I want to deliver a couple of buses to, to, to Kunton, and then have her to use the radio frequency to contact those drivers. It's stupid. And there's a lot of middlemen. We, we don't like that. Let me find why the what why we are doing this because there is a big problem. When we call the calling centers, they call, they use radio frequency to contact the vans, and the vans they are when they are busy they are not responding to the radio frequency, and the calling center they won't call you back. Hey, I got a van, so there's a big loophole. Keep going on, you keep calling, and they don't call back, and you keep calling. So I was like this baby. I was just, just, just waiting every single morning to deliver my lunch boxes. I don't have the money. I don't have the money to, to, to have my own logistic fleet. So why don't, why don't I just go to build my own logistic fleet myself? A virtual logistic fleet, when I just in giant WhatsApp. When, when I ever need a van, I just place an order and then it goes to every single driver in Hong Kong. And, the, and they know I need a van. So we start to play. Okay, giant WhatsApp is okay, it's doable. Why? Because every, because every single driver, they have a smartphone now. They are not idiots, they are not stupid. So we start to build a startup called GoGo Van. So at the beginning, we found, we talked to every single driver on the street in every single industrial district. We lock on the windows again and ask for their problems. If I'm building a building an app for you to take orders, what do you want? What do you want in it? What's the feature? What's the design? What's the user experience? User interface? What's the biggest problem of you of doing this business, driving an event around in Hong Kong? How many money do you make a day? How many chips you make from A to B? Uh, what's the most popular location that you ever uh, park in? And what's the biggest group of market? What's the biggest target audience in this industry? After we get all this information, we start to think, okay, th that is a very, very big market. And there's a lot of information loss in, uh, during the process. And we think if we build this app, according to the drivers, they will use it. Why? Because that's the problem they told us. They told us where is the problem. 
what is the problem and ask us how to fix it. And then we just build a product that fits exactly of what they want. And then we start to design. So we use two months to get our first prototype, the driver app, and then we have a very, very stupid prototype. And get the prototype on the street and talk to the drivers again. And ask, hey, I have this one. Go, go van. It looks very cool. They said, no. I don't know how to use it. Okay, let me show it to you. After I show it to you, is it easy to use? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Then we go back to the office and start to do it again. After a couple of time, there's a one uh, 48 years old driver. I just put the phone on the table. And then he said, what is this? It's Google Van. It can help you to make more money. Just try it out. And then in two minutes, he said, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. I said, why? Why is fascinating? It's easy. I'm 48 years old. I got my smartphone for two months. And I, now I know how to use it. So we think we do it right. So we start to do a replicate the model. Talk to the drivers every single day, from day to night, from day to night, to in every single district. I, I can swear to God, every single parking lot in Hong Kong, I have been to. I put flyers in front of the cars, in front of the vans. So before we officially launched the client side, we had over 1,000 drivers registered with us. They said they believe in us. They will use Google Van. So I said, that's great. So we are going to launch in a possibility two months. So in July 8th, we officially launched Google Van. And in the first day, we just gave our flyers on the street, try if anyone would use our Google Van service. And suddenly, there's some, someone download the app and place the order. And somehow, there's a you know, driver took the orders. I said, it's working. It's working. It's really it's working. And then we were very, very excited. So that's how I, today the topic is from selling lunch boxes to building, to disrupting calling centers. Today, Google Van is the largest logistic bridge in Hong Kong. From July to today, we have 9,000 drivers registered in, uh, with Google Van, and it's about 30% of the addressable market share in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, there's about uh, 70,000 uh, light bus vehicle registered with the uh, motor vehicle departments and half of them is registered by a company, and half of them is self-owned, individual-owned, and we got 30% of them under our system. And every single day, we process over 2,500 transactions, just in uh, under five months. And every single day, we process over 22, uh, no, 200,000 Hong Kong dollars value transaction every single day. So, um, my story here is just want to tell you, if you are building a startup, you may get a fascinating idea that you believe in, but you got to talk to your user. And when you hit a wall, don't turn back and walk back. Uh, and then repeat some, some steps that you think you did it wrong. Just look forward. What's the biggest problem I experienced and how I'm going to solve it? For me, Building a startup is all about solving a problem. For the lunch process, it's a good business. I replicated free newspaper model. I believe I can make some money, and it's okay, it's a little bit money. But for this one, we just closed an angel run funding, which is uh, very, very remarkable. And one of the investors is previous uh, chairman of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, uh, Asia Pacific region. So, and he, told me why he's interested in this model is because it's solving a problem everyone would experience in their life. And I hope my story here can tell you how to, how to move on in your startup life and how to, how to stay there. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Very interesting and creative.